People say music is a spiritual language, it's the language of spirit, it's the language of what can't be written or spoken. It's just, you're dealing with uh, frequency and you're, you're, dealing, you're dealing with um, harmony, melody, rhythm, and these things are a form of language. And I suppose my philosophy is to kind of find my own voice within that. I think that's what all good art is, is, is um, something that's convincing and perhaps unique, you know, or not. For some people it might be to, to be able to really fit in, you know. I don't sort of judge people for having a different approach to it all. If I was asked to describe what I do, um, it's something I find difficult to really articulate, but um, I suppose I focus a lot on synthesized sounds. Music for me originated uh, in a time in life where I wanted escapism, and a certain element of that has stayed with me. I think having my own studio is really born out of necessity. I can't work at home. I need to feel like I'm going somewhere for a purpose. The great mythologist Joseph Campbell called it the bliss station. You know, he talks about the idea of a place of bliss and it's, it sounds cheesy, but it's, it's, it's about more than the selfish enjoyment. It's about, it's about um, coming into who you really are and you need a space to do that. Everyone needs that. You know, this is why I have all this kit around me. You know, it's, it's, these are tools in, in order to, to realize your what's inside your head, you know, getting it out and getting it, you know, down into a listenable format that's the clearest it can be. So I first discovered Adams through a friend of mine who was using the A77s. Yeah, he just used to sit and crank them and we would just sit in the studio and, and work together or I would mostly listen to him mix on them and um, they're definitely very different to a lot of speakers at the time. I think over the, over the years people have sort of tried to catch up and do their own thing but they definitely have their own sound and um, yeah I decided to get the A7s uh, back then and I've just kind of stuck with them ever since. And there's a couple of major things that you need to consider with, with monitoring. I think the acoustics need to be right um, but within the speakers themselves they need to be realistic. And uh, I think that it's important to have something which will translate. So they're not going to like make things too sweet, too dull. Just you want to be able to do so, make decisions in the studio which are going to translate across different mediums, you know. Um, and good monitors do that. I think they they're kind of truthful. You know, they give you a clear picture of everything. But in order to do that, you also need to sort out your space. So those two things go hand in hand. I think one of the most important things I came across recently, very recently, is the idea of deconstructing your own process. And it's something that I'm sure is a lot of writing and talking about it um, out there. And I would recommend anyone to go and look at that. Maybe it's me, I've been making music for a long time. I have a kind of fairly fluid approach to things. I think things happen quite quickly. And you can kind of end up making music which is, gets pretty samey. And um, I think it's important to keep pulling apart what you do and deconstruct it. When I say deconstruct, it could be, you know, you just mute most of the track and just listen to some, just like one piece of it for a while and see how that sounds. And then maybe just add little bits and start deleting, taking it out, you know, um, and see how, see how much your music relies on that structure. Does it sound good without the drums? You know, can you do a beatless version? Um, that's something I've started to get into more recently, yeah. And it's definitely working for me.